Hello again, this is Alex with MasterChefsTrading.com and this is Market Recap for Friday, July 15th, 2016. So we're breaking out to all-time highs. Uh, we'll look at S&P 500 SPY, ETF SPY, which uh, may have a bearish engulfing on it. Uh, also, New York Stock Exchange Composite broke out uh, above its previous resistance. Lots of sectors, including three offensive sectors, technology, discretionary, and industrials, are hitting all-time highs. Uh, conversely, bonds are under strong pressure from pattern targets. I'll show show what I mean by that. Uh, we'll look at the dollar, which is a possible possible bull flag uh, on its chart, and the yen, very interesting, reversed over the 52-week highs. Uh, so we'll look at gold and dollar, which are both rising together currently. Uh, but for how long will this continue? Oil is attempted to stabilize, we'll look at natural gas, which is testing its breakout, and finally we'll finish off with cotton, which is breaking out to two-year highs. Alright, let's start off with S&P 500 ETF SPY. This is total return, in other words, it has dividends added back into the price. So we have all-time highs just this Friday, but now we pulled back, and this looks like a bearish engulfing. Now we need a confirmation uh, next week with a possible gap down or continuation lower. Um, in any case, this bearish engulfing needs to be taken in the context of a bigger uptrend. So if we do get a pullback of some sort, I think it would be a buying opportunity. Um, I would not necessarily be shorting uh, S&P 500 at this point of the game. We had a uh, breakdown below this uh, support uh, during the Brexit, but this clearly was a bear trap, and now we're uh, breaking out to all-time highs. So this is clearly a bullish chart in my mind, so I will be uh, only looking to be buying this chart. Uh, market breadth is confirming the all-time highs because we're pushing higher and higher. Uh, we're a little bit overextended. You can see this is a uh, ITBM, Intermediate Term Breast Momentum Oscillator. We're kind of in a very high territory, so we most likely are going to correct, and we may actually go negative on this uh, indicator. But again, we'll see where it uh, goes. Uh, for now, this is a very bullish chart, and I think I will be looking to buy it on any pullback. Uh, this is a little bit longer term time frame. This is S&P 500 without the dividends. And without the dividends, we also broke out to all-time highs. So uh, this is also confirming uh, the bullish posture. Uh, this is my uh, proprietary uh, market breadth index that entered the bullish territory uh, back in May. And uh, that's where I turned bullish, in my opinion. And then uh, basically I'm looking to buy on any pullbacks. Here below we have a little bit of a uh, divergence. So, for example, this is RSI, we're pushing to all-time highs uh, for the actual uh, index, but RSI is, has not pushed to new highs. You can see it became overbought here in March, April, but has not become overbought here in, um, in July. So this could be a divergence, and uh, we're certainly overdue for some sort of a pullback, so uh, a pullback um, could easily materialize. On the longer term time frame, this is breadth indicators, percentage of stocks above the 20, 50, and the 200 day exponential moving averages. Um, you know, this is a bit on an overextended side, uh, but the, the longer term indicator, for example, the 200 day percentage of stocks above the 200 day EMA is firmly in a bullish territory. Um, we're at 76% right now. The same goes for bullish percent index, we're at 71%, so uh, certainly a uh, looks very uh, strongly bullish, and the breadth is confirming uh, the breakout to all-time highs. This is a chart that kind of puts this uh, S&P 500 in a broader, uh, in a longer term time frame. This is a weekly time uh, frame going back to uh, three years. So just to put this in perspective, this was a two-year low uh, just in the beginning of this year in February, and now we're again breaking out to all-time highs. So this was a very powerful move. Um, 
very unexpected in my opinion, but nevertheless, this is happening and we have to respect it. Now, clearly we are in an uptrend right now. So uh, the past three weeks have been extremely strong. This Brexit thing was completely negated basically the next week and then next week had a follow through and another follow through this week. So clearly over overbought, uh, overextended to the upside, but not weak at all. So. Uh, I think that any kind of a pullback should be viewed as a buying opportunity. This is New York Stock Exchange Composite Index. Uh, I wanted to highlight that uh, it has broken out to uh, above this resistance level. You cannot really trade NYSC Composite. There is no ETF that follows it. There used to be one, but it uh, got discontinued. But the point that of the matter is that even the broader index is uh, breaking out above resistance. It's not at all-time highs just yet, but it is breaking out to, to, to a new resistance, above the resistance levels. Further down below, I highlighted this indicator. Uh, it's new highs, less new lows, divided by total active symbols. It has been, um, it has hit plus 10%, and also um, it has been steadily, so we're getting steady supply of uh, new highs. Um, as far as the advanced decline lines and advanced decline volume lines, they're both confirming uh, the breakouts and um, they're looking good really. And the uh, same goes for the bullish percent index and the percentage of stocks above the 200 day EMA. So they're both looking quite bullish in my opinion. This is XLK technology ETF going back a couple of uh, three years. Uh, so wanted to highlight several of the sectors um, that, com that comprise the general market. So, for example, technology sector represents about 20% of the uh, market capitalization of the S&P 500, and it is at all-time high. So it, it is, you know, quite strong. Um, and leading basically technology now appears to be leading which is a very good um, you know good sign so to speak technology is very much an offensive sector um, and uh, leadership from technology is a good sign for the general market uh, another offensive sector is of course consumer discretionary you can't really get any more uh, offensive than consumer discretionary and it also hit all-time highs this week this week so uh, also a good sign there and another uh, offensive sector is industrials this is a broadly diversified sector which includes quite a bit of uh, transportation stocks as well and it is very strong I mean look at this breakout to all-time highs so um, as far as the offensive sectors are concerned, uh, the only th one that's missing here is the um, financial. So let me just briefly look at that. Um, this is an offensive sector, and it is also, you know, had a good week and good three weeks, but it is not at all time highs. And the reason for that is because this uh, this ETF is heavy in banks, and um, you know, banks have been under pressure because of the um, uh, rise in bond prices and, by extension, uh, lowering of the uh, yields on the treasury bonds. <clears throat> now, some of the commentators um, that I listened to mentioned that this rally have been driven mostly by defensive sectors. So, for example, consumer staples is a defensive sector. Uh, it has been incredibly strong. Um, just continued higher and higher and higher, again hitting all-time highs this week. So definitely a part of the market and definitely a defensive sector. Um, another uh, defensive sector that also had a very strong run, this is a weekly time frame, of course, is utilities. Um, I think it's also partially uh, because of the low interest rates. Um, however, you can see that this week utilities did come down a little bit because of the uh, sell-off in the bond market. Also uh, real estate. Uh, real estate sector is actually part of the financial sector but it's a smaller part. So also all-time highs and again I think this is because of the uh, low interest rates. 
now it looks certainly overextended, so a correction, correction of some sort is in order, but I think this is a bullish chart, so I would be certainly looking to buy it um, in the near future. And here are the telecoms, um, also all-time high is very strong move. Uh, it's only about uh, a little bit under 3% of the S&P 500, but nevertheless is a part of the market. So to summarize, we have around 60% of the market which are hitting all-time highs, which includes three of the uh, offensive sectors, technology, industrials, and consumer discretionary. Um, and three of the and four of the defensive sectors: the consumer staples, um, utilities, telecoms, and real estate. Uh, but nevertheless, you know, um, this is a, a pretty decent mix, in my opinion. And I think even you know three of the four offensive sectors uh, hitting all-time highs and pushing higher is certainly a welcome sign for the stock bulls. Oh, by the way, I wanted to show where I got this information. If you go to SPDR website, you can look up uh, ATF SPY, and you can find a location uh, that they are um, that that are within the fund itself. So you can see that information technology, uh, consumer discretionary, consumer staples, etc. So all of those add up to uh, the ones that I mentioned today. Add up to about 60% of the general stock market. Moving on to the bonds, so bonds uh, had really been under pressure for the past couple of weeks uh, after hitting all-time highs. Now, I mentioned several times that this is a very steep advance and it's unsustainable. You could see there was a similar advance here, very strong advance, followed by a corrective pattern. Um, this is a normal correction within a bigger uptrend. At this point of the game, I don't know if it has uh, reversed into the uh, bear market. Um, but uh, I would probably for now uh, avoid buying um, bonds uh, and see where this uh, corrective pattern uh, will take this fund. Now, the obvious Thing for here for um, this fund is to close this gap here which is a very large gap um, and then there's another very large gap right there so uh, those two gaps uh, need to be closed and this would be an obvious uh, initial target now if we continue lower and possibly break below this support at 126.37 then we'll entertain a possibility that we're now in a bear market. For now, uh, I would just look at it as a normal correction within a bigger uptrend. In fact, if we look at the uh, weekly time frame, the picture becomes much clearer. You can see here, I pointed this out, uh, the depth of this uh, saucer, saucer pattern, a cup pattern, 6.1%. We came up around that much. And then I said, this is a uh, pattern is complete, and lo and behold, this week we got a sell-off. So um, that's what I meant by uh, we're, uh, you know, approaching a pattern target. The more diversified bonds, the AGG, uh, looks stronger than the TLT, but it also has uh, quite a bit of gaps that need to be filled right here at 112, another one here at 111, and yet another one here uh, around 110. So um, very steep advance again. Um, I would I would certainly not uh, look to open any new positions, uh, but if you have any positions open, maybe keep them open for now. I mean, I, I don't see why uh, close them if, uh, you know, we're going, we might actually continue higher. Um, here, this pattern, you could see, is even more clear. I pointed this one out repeatedly in my previous videos. Uh, this pattern was complete and then some, so we actually went up higher than 3.4%. Now we're uh, correcting, correcting back down. Uh, again, I don't know at this point if this is a true reversal um, of the entire trend, and now we're going to be making lower lows. Uh, or is this sur uh, simply a correction within a bigger uptrend? Uh, time, will, time will tell, and, um, you know, is, it really it depends on the central banks, really, uh, at this point of the game. 
All right, let's switch gears to the currency universe. So this is US dollar index, uh, daily time frame. So this is a Brexit uh, thing, and then we had a um, kind of sideways continuation around the 200-day moving average. So this looks kind of like a bull flag to me. And if we do get a breakout above, what is it, 96, 86, uh, we could easily see uh, prices around 98, 60, or maybe even higher. Uh, this is caused by, of course, Euro being under pressure, but even more interestingly is the Japanese yen um, that I'll touch upon uh, more in more detail in a little bit. Uh, this is a uh, weekly time frame for the US dollar, same chart. So this is that um, possible bull flag that I just pointed out. And we have this downward slope and trend line. We possibly broke out above it. Uh, but we need a little bit maybe more follow through to see this uh, breakout. Anyways, the if we do get to 100 here, um, then this pattern uh, of a cup and handle uh, could come into play and we could see substantial more upside for the US dollar. Now this is a very interesting chart. This is Japanese yen going back a couple of three years. Uh, this is a weekly time frame also. So I showed this chart maybe a couple of weeks ago and I said that this is a level to watch really. Really, we came up to this level, we failed to close above that level and then bounced off of it with a gap down. So this for now looks like a genuine re rejection at this point. Uh, I'm sure we'll get some kind of a retest of this rejection. Uh, like for example right there, we had a breakdown and then a, re a, re a retest and then a continuation lower. And then another breakdown and another retest of this breakdown. So uh, there's always uh, going to be a Almost always there is a uh, retest of this uh, breakdown, but for now this looks this is possibly a reversal uh, of the 52-week highs for Japanese yen. Uh, if you trade forex, this is the US dollar over the Japanese yen, and this is the uh, pattern there. You can see maybe this is a bullish engulfing, very large uh, weekly bullish engulfing, and this is a very large candle compared to any other of the white candles here so for now this looks very uh you know strong and bullish so same thing here we came down we attempted to close below it but then we failed and then rallied above it so for now this looks like a but you know genuine re uh, reversal of the downtrend in the japanese yen uh, we'll see if it holds on the retest but this looks good for now and here's the subject that everybody wants to know about, of course, is gold. So gold, um, it's been rising, uh, you know, for the past uh, few months, I guess. But for this chart, what I wanted to point out is the, is the correlation uh, that has been um, more positive than it is normally. This is a correlation coefficient between the gold and US dollar. And this is, by the way, a weekly chart going back to 1977. Now, if you look at this chart, gold and the US dollar spends most of its time negatively correlating. And this makes perfect sense because gold is priced in dollar dollars. If dollar um, is in, you know, increasing, then gold will uh, come under pressure. This does not always hold and there are occasional forays into the positive territory when both gold and dollar are moving in the same direction. By the way, as an aside, I want to show that um, the correlation between the S&P 500 and gold is quite poor and um, it's basically all over the place. So, you know, some people are saying, oh, if stocks are dropping, then you should be buying gold. That's probably not a good idea. Anyways, um, I wanted to show uh, a little bit more zoomed in. If I go to daily time frame and let me go to, I don't know, five years out, I want to show that right now the correlation between gold and dollar is actually quite high. 
but not terribly unusual. So we had similar correlation here in 2015 um, and, you know, quite high correlation here in 2013 as well. So <clears throat> on occasion it does happen, um, but eventually it will uncorrelate uh, because there is much more negative correlation between the two. This is gold continuous contract on a weekly time frame. So this is a 52-week high uh, hit last week. Uh, possible bearish engulfing pattern here from this week. Um, also, um, this is one of my uh, proprietary indicators, the GBA, the gold breadth index. For the record, I'm saying that for now gold is in a bull market. So. <clears throat> A pullback would most likely offer a buying opportunity, uh, but uh, it came, you know, there was non-stop buying for the past uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six weeks. So there certainly needs to be a rest period of some sort. Um, GDX also uh, 52 week highs. This is a, a gold miners. Uh, ETF on a daily time frame, very steep advance, just pretty much non-stop up, especially here last few, uh, let me see, from end of June, beginning of July, very steep advance, so uh, corrective pattern is certainly in order. On this chart I wanted to point out this uh, bullish percent index, it was at 100% here, in other words, every single uh, stock within the GDX was on a point and figure buy signal. This is very overextended to the upside, in my opinion. So a corrective pattern uh, certainly is in order. Um, anyways, that's all for gold. Let's continue to other commodities. Uh, this is oil, West Texas Intermediate, on the daily time frame. I pointed out this port break a couple of, let me say, last week. Um, for now, it is sort of trading sideways around that same area, so it's possibly attempting to stabilize around this area, um, but my bias is to the downside, honestly, and the reason for that is the next chart. Uh, this is weekly, uh, the West Texas Intermediate, and, you know, this is a, still, to me, looks like a downtrend, because this is a lower low, and yet we have not made a higher high. We went, came to a resistance here, from this uh, various uh, peaks here, and so far we're rejected. Now it's possible we're going to reattempt to get back to those peaks, um, or we could actually just continue lower. Um, but for now, this chart looks bearish to me, and I would like to see a breakout maybe 255. Um, so that we see a higher high and higher low pattern. For now, I'm still seeing a pattern of lower lows and lower highs. All right, this is natural gas. Um, these are 52-week highs, uh, so I consider this security to be in a bull market, but it certainly is overextended. We had a very strong move of this May lows, and then uh, now we're correcting in a sort of uh, fallen wedge pattern, I guess. Uh, so anyway, so this is a bullish chart. The clear resistance level, which now possibly turns support, is around $2.50. Also, there's a 50-day moving average coming in around there. So there's a lot of reasons to be uh, for the natural gas to bounce there. Uh, on the weekly time frame, this is a even more clear picture. You can see a clear breakout above resistance and now a corrective pattern. Now, uh, again, I'm looking at this point, at this security from a point of view of uh, only looking to uh, buy uh, on any pullback. And finally, we're coming to the end of the presentation. This is cotton on a daily time frame. Very strong move, breakout above this level here. And these are actually multi-year highs. Of very high volume. So certainly a, a strong breakout. Now this high volume could indicate that we are approaching uh, a buying climax and certainly looks like the price has not gone above 75 so uh, for three days in a row so looks like we're in a buying climax and we're gonna get a correction. 
Um, but this is a bullish looking chart now and I will be looking to buy it uh, on a pullback as well. Here's cutting on a weekly time frame. This is a clear breakout. Look at the stick. Very big one. And this is a very long consolidation. Um, we had a break, I guess a false breakdown here, um, which was followed by a strong rally and a breakout 250, well, multi-year high. So, uh, again, also very large volume. So this certainly looks like we need to see a correction of some sort. Anyways, um, this uh, that's it for this week's recap. If you have any, if you have a chance, please take a look at messageastrading.com and also please please stay tuned on how to find us on the internet. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. So I wanted to show you how to find us on the internet. Please go to masterchesstrading.com. We do have a trade alert services which are live right now. Uh, so please consider signing up for um, the service. It's only $24.95 per month. Also, if you sign up for our mailing list, you get a discounted uh, membership. Um, you get to see uh, what I'm buying and selling and which funds I'm looking at uh, potential uh, buy sells, etc. There's quite a bit of uh, members only content once you log in. There is um, uh, a lot of information about risk control, which is actually extremely important uh, for traders because the preservation of capital is really uh, one of the paramount um, to the uh, success as trading in trading. There's quite a bit of psychology of videos, uh, psychology of trading videos in the members only section as well. Um, also, I'm uh, going to be starting a dividend aristocrats um, service. Uh, for now, it's free for the members that are logged in, uh, that are already paying members. So uh, that's another benefit to signing up soon. Uh, the blog section shows uh, the previous uh, posts and market videos, of course. Um, also, I added a new section here, which is FAQs, and I do get quite a bit of questions about various, um, you know, ideas uh, and questions about the market. So, if you do have a question, please don't hesitate to send it in. Um, you know, send it uh, here, and uh, I'll be uh, able. Hopefully, I'll be able to answer it for you. All right. Um, Thanks for watching and please consider signing up for the trailer services. Bye-bye.